A Shalawa Makiam Wa Akwath out of the elect of the nation of Israel and welcome back to another lesson. In this lesson, we are going to get a better understanding of the Greek word of the day and it's pronounced pseudo prophets. Pseudo prophets. Before we go further, we give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Wa Rakaha Kwadash. Want to give double honors to my apostles and elders that taught me the 100% truth according to the law and the prophets. And speaking about the prophets, you also have false prophets, okay? And that's where you get the word pseudo, okay? The word pseudo. Pseudo. It says, not genuine, bogus, artificial, fake. False. There you go. You see. So there's going to be false prophets amongst us in this truth. Now, when you go into the Greek letter Bible, and you get the uh, prefix from Strong's G fifty five seventy one for the word pseudo. It says lying, deceitful, false, and a prophet. Strong. It's someone that speaks before. And interpreter of oracles or other hidden things. Okay, this one's easy to understand. Okay, a prophet is someone who speaks, okay, in, um, in mediation of the Heavenly Father, of man filled with the Spirit of Yahweh, whom by God's authority and command and words of weight pleads the cause of Yahweh and urges salvation of men. And those men are the Israelite man out of the elect. So, G 5578 Suda Prophetes Suda Prophetes Suda Prophetes Okay, but to get a uh, clear understanding That's where you get the word false prophet Okay, when you go down here It says a spurious prophet Pretended foreteller Imposter false prophet One who is acting the part of a divinely inspired prophet Utters falsehoods under the name of divine prophecy. So let's open up with the precept in Ezekiel 13 and 3. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh Shemel Shai, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. You see, and the scriptures speak about lean not under your own understanding. Let's get that lean not on your own understanding. Because a lot of false prophets, since they don't, they don't have a root. They don't have a a, uh, a proper base about the uh, knowledge of the scriptures. They think that by them learning by themselves, they will somehow become prophets. That's not how you become a prophet. First of all, you got to be predestined. Okay, like Yahweh Shimel Shai told Jeremiah in the first chapter that before Jeremiah was born before he was born in the womb he was predestined to be a prophet among the nations and a prophet's true job is to talk about war okay um, pestilence famine and destruction that's how you identify a true prophet but a false prophet will lean into his own understanding a false prophet will tell you lies this is proverbs 3 and 5 chores and the lord he how about shimao shai with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, you see, and a lot of, let me finish this off, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct, direct your paths, you see, but a false prophet will not be directed in the right path because they're following their own understanding. So going back to Ezekiel 13 and 3, thus said the Lord God, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Yeah, man. Examples of a false prophet, prophets that haven't seen anything, okay, are those who speak against the uh, proper uh, prophecies. Those who say that the uh, mark of the beast is not the RFID microchip, okay, uh, those who say that there is not going to be uh, no World War Three. those who uh, speak about um, how Esau is going to make it, you know, that, the, uh, that all Gentiles can be saved. These are examples of foolish prophets. All right now, let's get another precept. This is Matthew 24 and 11. Matthew 24 and 11 in the New Testament. Matthew 
Matthew 24 and 11. Let's see what comes out. And this is is speaking. And many false prophets, right? So prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now let's get one example in the scriptures where there was an account of a false prophet. Okay, let's go into the book of Acts. Book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 6. Okay, Acts 13 and 6 about the account of a false prophet. And when they had gone through the isle or island onto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer a false prophet, a pseudo-prophet, a Jew, an Israelite, man. So even amongst our people, you're going to see a lot of false prophets, man. Those who try to buckle up against prophecy. And in reality, they're known as what? Sorcerers, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of Yahweh. So even Yahweh Shai says how even the demons tremble, man. So really a false prophet is meant to be part of the truth. Okay, even though a false prophet will be considered false because he speaks uh, de deceitfully, he's still part of the truth, meaning he's not in the truth, but he still adds, okay, uh, fuel to the fire, man. In other words, but Elimus the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, which stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. So a false prophet's job is to try to take away, okay, uh, you brothers from the faith, man. Okay. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. And there's an example of you brothers. You brothers are an example of Paul filled with the Holy Spirit set his eyes on him he marked them okay so paul marked that sorcerer that false prophet and what did paul say and said unto him o fool of all subtlety and no mischief thou child of the devil and that's what we tell these false prophets man you are your father the devil okay because they follow the ways of esau esau is that main false prophet thou enemy of all righteousness Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. Hey, so Paul blinded these prophets, man. And, and that's very spiritual because us brothers, when we're in the highways and hedges, and we speak Yahweh Shai, we speak the word, hey, a lot of these people out there, especially of our own people, they spiritually get blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw that was done, he believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of the times why Yahweh Bashim al Shai raises false prophets is so the elect can actually get sealed because a lot of the elect will be sealed, okay, in a form of seeing the miracles. Okay, by the uh, prophets, okay, by them preaching the word and seeing false prophets. That's one of the ways how others will start believing. They're like, damn, man, that is a false prophet. Well, you know what? Damn, these are the men of the Lord being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. You see that? So there's an example in the scriptures of a pseudo prophet, Akim. Now let's get another one. This is the book of First Kings 20, 20, 20. Okay, this is the account of, I believe this is uh, Ahab, First Kings 22 and 20. And Yahweh said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, Okay, now this is speaking about the angels, man. There was a council amongst the Heavenly Father and the angels, okay, who were, you know, um, talking it out, how they were going to deceive the false prophet, okay? And the reason why there's a uh, pseudo-prophets, they're actually ordained by Yahweh Shai when you read verse 19. But 
moving forward, it says, and one said, and who's that one? The one speaking about, okay, the angels, the host of heaven. So one of the host of heavens, okay, which really, okay, though we call them demons, they're really actually righteous angels, man. Okay, but since we are part of the script, in the script we, we call them demons, but they're still uh, doing the will of Yahweh by Shemal Shai. And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. So like, yeah, maybe, you know, if I set him up this way or, if, you know, I, I go inside his dream and deceive him with another, per you know, these are examples of how um, the angels had counsel amongst each other. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. OK, now what kind of spirit was that? This is verse 22. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth. And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. So it's not just one, but it was many. And he said, thou shalt persuade him. Matter of fact, it says here, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Okay, so this is plural. This means more than one. And the Lord said, what? Many false prophets. This is the book of Matthew 24, 11, once again. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. You see that? And that was part of the uh, scriptures that we brought out earlier, that many, not just one, but many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. And who shall arise to them? Hey, Yahweh Ba Shemel Shai, he's the power that's controlling, okay, the false prophets. It says, and he said, thou shalt persuade them and prevail. Also go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Okay, so there's another um, example, I'll even in the Old Testament, of how the Lord, okay, um, he raised up, he created, okay, pseudo prophets. So let's get one more, I'll This is Sirach 27 and 6. The fruit declareth if the tree has been dressed. So it's the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. Now, to get a better understanding, let's get it in Sirach 27 and 6. You can tell how well a tree has been cared of by the fruit it bears. And you can tell a person's feelings by the way he expresses himself. Now, is this talking about a literal tree? And the answer is no. That tree is symbolic okay, to man. Men are like unto trees. This Mark 8, 24. And he looked up and said, I see man as trees walking. So that tree is symbolic to a man. And not just any man, but in this case, it's a false prophet. Okay. Has been cared by the fruit it bears. And you can tell a person's feelings by the way he expresses himself. So let's get a precept. This is the book of Matthew 7 and 16. You should know them by the fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree, okay, which that's you brothers of the hopeful elect, you're considered a good tree, a good man that brings forth good fruit, okay? And that good fruit, it's how you can tell when a man has been cared of, okay, by the fruit that you bear, meaning your works, okay, meaning, meaning your, your teachings, okay, that that fruit, it's, it's, it's organic, but... A man who doesn't teach proper doctrine, he'll be considered a false prophet who brings forth evil fruit. Toxic GMO. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit, right? So every false prophet that doesn't bring the elect, okay, to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is what? Hewn down and cast into the fire. So that's going to be the judgment of false prophets, pseudo prophets. Wherefore, by their fruits, okay, which are their works, you shall know them. So to prove that the fruits are like unto the works. Let's get a precept. This is the book of Psalms 128 and 2. For thou shalt eat, labor of thine hands. It says, for thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Fruit are like unto food. Uh, food, uh, so like fruits is like unto food. 
and what you eat it. The labor is the work of thy hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. So the elect will be happy because of their labors. This is Ecclesiastes 5, 518. Enjoy the fruit of your labor. See, enjoy your fruit of your labor. Let's get that in a better understanding. Ecclesiastes 5 and 18. Ecclesiastes 5, 18. Behold that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor. That he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which Yahweh shall give with him, for this is his portion. So the fruit is like unto your works, man. So by the fruit, okay, the works of a man, will he be um, known. That's how you identify a, uh, a, a true prophet and a false prophet. This is Jeremiah 6 and, and 14. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. So when you go here in verse 13, from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one did it falsely. So the word false is found once again in the Old Testament. So we get the word pseudo. Okay. False prophets will tell our people peace, peace. When there is no peace you see that so any any prophet that's telling you that peace is coming to babylon and that everything's going to be okay you know that there's no mark of the bees you don't got to worry about it okay you don't got to worry about you know going to the streets and teaching you just gotta you know have a, a relationship between you and the lord and that's it man and you cannot you do whatever you want come as you are okay that's known as a false prophet man those who speak about peace okay and with Daokyum, I pray this um, lesson was edifying. Greek word of the day, pseudo-prophet. Pseudo-prophet. Down to say Shalom.